Vikes Now, I am Dustin Baker. We are less than three weeks from the Vikings' regular season game. That will transpire on September 10th at U.S. Bank Stadium. And it was announced today that the Vikings will face Baker Mayfield as QB1, which is kind of just uh, realizing the reality or expectation. That was probably going to happen in the first place, but there was a little bit of drama that Kyle Trask would snatch the job. But there is one more preseason game left. The Vikings will probably lose it because that's what the preseason O'Connell era does is get out to a little lead, put in the third teamers, and then watch as they squander that. Bada bing, the team looking to go 0-3 again against the lowly Arizona Cardinals. First, they'll have joint practices this week and probably touch on those sometime Thursday would be my guess. Uh, For a little housekeeping tomorrow, I'm going to bring on our weekly guest, Josh Fry from Purple PTSD, and he's going to give us his 53-man roster projection live in living color. Well, live to me uh, about 20 minutes after for you guys in living color, an unveiling of his 53-man roster projection. So with that in mind, I want to go over roster bubble candidates for these Vikings. By my count, there are 16. Of course, that is debatable if I missed one which is a real possibility, put it in the comments, or if I'm wrong about one, put it in the comments. And how I'm going to define roster bubble here is players that could really go either way. I do not have obvious cuts on here because the show would go for two hours. Like uh, Ben Sims, the tight end five, TE5, he's not making the team. If he does, I'll be wrong and great. Uh, but there's a lot of guys that are merely here for, you know, summer depth, like CJ Colin, a cornerback. They're not on the list of 16 roster bubble guys. These are ones that, in my opinion, could truly go either way, 16 of them. So, you know, it's a lot to unpack. So we'll probably spend about 45 seconds on each as I motor through them. The first one might raise eyebrows, but I'm putting it on here because I can't figure out what they're going to do. Jaron Hall, the rookie quarterback, fifth rounder, I believe is a roster bubble candidate um, because when the NFL expanded this emergency quarterback rule, there's a lot of little caveats on it. They don't get a free 53-man roster spot. They just have the ability to not deactivate an extra guy on Sundays, which is a little weird. I don't know why they can't just make it a 54th roster spot and call it good. That's, that's too easy, too simple. Uh, but with Jaron Hall, well, tr- traditionally, the, the Vikings roll with two quarterbacks, and especially on Sundays, they've never been snake bitten. Well, they've been snake bitten by a lot of shit, but not like the Cardinals were at quarterback in the NFC Championship. So I think to start the season, many of us believed and still believe that Jaron Hall will make the roster merely because they don't want another team to steal him from the practice squad. It's it's actually pretty easy, straightforward to grab another player from a practice squad. And putting Hall on the 53-man roster would alleviate that. But, uh, it, I mean, I've only seen two games worth of him. And his offensive line is third string garbage. Uh, but I really don't know if this gentleman is the guy after Cousins at QB1. I, I don't think the Vikings would use that as a solution if they're going to be done with Cousins as soon as next spring. I think we'll be sizing up the draft for, for the next guy. I personally don't think it'll be Jaron Hall. It'd be great if I'm wrong and he turns out to be a baller. But he's 25 years old. We've got a preseason sample size. He looks like a fifth rounder to me. Therefore, I believe he's on the roster bubble. And I, I, another litmus test for this is that you shouldn't be surprised either way about these 16 guys if they're practice squad, cut, or make the team. So Jaron Hall is my first one, the only one at quarterback. I don't think uh, the new XFLer Jordan... Tamamu, however you say it. I don't think he's he's not going to make the team. Uh, he's just going to be there to provide some preseason relief for Mr. Hall against the Cardinals. The next one is kind of unforeseen, at least for what we thought on this show and generally speaking in Minneapolis. Dwayne McBride. I've spoken with Yannick Eckhart from Vikings Territory at length off-air about uh, kind of McBride's uh, riches-to-rags tale of this offseason. He was considered a steal, in the seventh round, and perhaps he'll still be that. A lot of fantasy dynasty draft managers are stashing him on their taxi squads. But Dwayne McBride has really not looked that great in the preseason. I know he scored a touchdown last Saturday night. Good for him. Uh, But he doesn't really look the part just yet. They put him on kick returns for some reason. That was an abomination. And I think that the reason that the Vikings auditioned Kareem Hunt and Mike Davis, it wasn't to take away snaps from Alexander Madison. That was because they were, in my opinion, concerned about the depth after Madison and Ty Chandler. 
And that, you know, implicates McBride as a culprit for, you know, maybe he's not going to make this roster. He played at the, you know, very end of the game on Saturday, six carries, 18 yards, and that touchdown. And I think McBride might be heading to the practice squad. That's my personal opinion. He won't be on my 53-man roster projection. And, you know, in full disclosure, I would have been very wrong. I thought in June or so, yeah, he's going to make the 53-man. Doesn't seem that that is the path, at least in my estimation. Uh, the next one is debatable, controversial, mysterious, is Kane and Wangwu. He's been beset by some mystery ailment for, what, two, two or three weeks now? And because of the kick return rule, which I'm not sure if the Vikings or other teams will jump in with both feet, his importance just isn't quite as grand anymore. If you have a essentially nullified kickoff, if that's how you want to play it, then you don't need a gangbusters uh, kick returner. Now, in my personal wish list, I hope that the Vikings still return kicks, and I hope Nwangu is the one to do it. But I think maybe not necessarily a roster bubble, but if your cell phone buzzes two hours from now or two days from now that... Kane is going to IR for four games. That shouldn't shock you one iota. I don't know if Kane and Wangu will be on the week one field, whether that is a roster cut or some sort of injury reserve trip. So I'm putting them on the list as a roster bubble. The next is where it gets really interesting because we love, the Vikings fans love chatting about wide receivers, and there are a bunch of them on this roster bubble. Last weekend, after the Titans preseason game, Kevin O'Connell seemed to hint at the possibility of keeping six wide receivers because the competition for the fifth spot is so robust, especially after they, was about three weeks ago, signed Nikhil Harry. But there are roster bubbles aplenty at WR5. I think it's safe to say Justin Jefferson for sure. K.J. Osborne, Jordan Addison, Jalen Naylor have four wide receiver spots spoken for. Good. That's the way we want it. But after that... It's a bunch of coin flips. Which one are we taking? Uh, Jalen Rager, uh, kind of the inverse of McBride. Uh, he was a fashionable roster cut projection by this guy and a lot of a few others, I'll, I'll say. But he's had a really good summer. He's done some nice things at training camp. And then in the preseason, the first game, he led the team in receiving. He's starting to look like he belongs in the Vikings offense when the lasting memory we have of him was the Colts game. We ran a couple bad routes, put them further in the hole, you know, which made history all the more glorious. But Jalen Rager, to me, felt like a probable roster cut. And now I think he's the probable WR5 because he's done the thing. He, he back was against the wall, and I think he's earned the spot. If he does not, and he is a roster cut, or they, they keep six wide receivers, these guys are even more firmly on the roster bubble than regular. Brandon Powell. He has done himself justice throughout this summer. He deserves a spot on the roster. I just don't know if the Vikings are going to keep six. And if they like Rager, that means that Brandon Powell is the odd man out. I've called him Diet Rager for a few months because he doesn't have first-round draft stock, but he basically plays just like Rager. Maybe not quite as fast, uh, but you know he's a special team savant and can, in my opinion, serve as an adept WR5 or, in his case, WR6 in an offense. Nikhil Harry was signed, what, on a random Sunday three weekends ago, and he's looked good. Uh, he, not the 32nd overall pick from the 2019 NFL draft that he should have busted out to with that stardom, but he looks like he belongs on some team's roster, and why not the Vikings when you start to get down to brass tacks? So Brandon Powell, Jalen Regular, and Nikhil Harry are on the roster bubble, and I'm going to throw in Tristan Jackson because I know the coaching staff likes him. We had a huge scare with him. Was it? Earlier this month, it looked like he was going to be lost for the year, but he's back. And this dude makes tons of sweet plays. If you just type it into Twitter or X app search box, Tristan Jackson, you're going to see about between last preseason and this preseason and training camp, about three or four really sweet catches that shows that he, like Harry, belongs on an NFL roster. So this is the most populous roster bubble spot because – Arguably, the WR5 or WR6 jobs are the most fascinating going down the stretch to these roster cuts, which, by the way, take place in one week. Uh, a couple more on offense, and then we'll get to the defense. Chris Reed has been on the NFI list now for about a month, and he's a good guard. Uh, the Vikings only used him a little bit last year when Garrett Bradbury got hurt. Uh, he's a journeyman. He's always done a decent job for, I think it was the Colts, the Jaguars. But I don't know if he's going to make this roster because he really hasn't done anything this summer. And, you know, was it can't make the club in the tub type of thing. Uh, so Reed, to me, is a roster bubble guy. I 
can't remember on my second to last roster projection that I published on Vikings ter- territory if I kept him or not, but I think when I get to the last one, he might be a cut. Ole Udo was a popular candidate for this roster bubble thing. I asked the writers at Vikings territory who would be a surprising roster cut, and a couple of them said Udo. Because I think the, the penalties pissed people off last weekend, and that's the most recent memory. Uh, I'll say this forever. I don't care where he lands. U- Ole Udo needs to be a team's backup tackle. Stop putting him at guard. It doesn't really work. Guy gets penalties when he's there. I I don't know what he was organically as a teenager and stuff, but just keep him at tackle. He's a good reservist tackle. Uh, But I think right now he's on the roster bubble because there's a world where they keep Chris Reed and Blake Brandle and Udo's the odd man out, or they keep Udo and Brandle and Reed is the odd man out. So when it comes down to it, Udo probably makes the roster due to experience. He's quietly been with the Vikings forever now. Was he a 2019 NFL draft pick? Pretty long tenure with the Vikings, but some say he's on the roster bubble. And these are credible dudes that have said it, so I'm keeping him on it accordingly. Next one is, I'm looking at my list, might be the most fascinating as of late. Nick Muse. In a vacuum, he deserves to be on the roster. If you look at his preseason antics, they are very splashy. He scored a touchdown, led the team in receiving Saturday night. He looked like the WR1 for the preseason game number two Vikings. But the problem for him is the Vikings tight end spots are spoken for. They usually keep three. TJ Hawkinson's not getting cut. Josh Oliver absolutely will not get cut. He was just signed. And then Kevin O'Connell called Johnny Munt the best TE3 in the world. He said that last week. Well, you can't get rid of any of those guys if you're going to have that opinion of all three. And that means you're either going to keep four tight ends and Muse will be the fourth, or he goes to the practice squad and then you'll wait until there's an injury to Hawkinson, Oliver, or Munt to, to bring him up. But he might get plucked from the practice squad because he looks pretty damn good. He's energetic. He's cool. Uh, Nick Muse is a roster bubble candidate. There's a lot of folks who think that he did enough to make the roster, and that's great. Hopefully they're right. But then again, last year at this time, uh, my famous example is T.Y. McGill. Looked like an absolute lock for the Vikings roster. And before you knew it, they said goodbye, and he signed with the 49ers. All right, to defense, the list is smaller. Ross Blacklock was traded for about one year ago by Quasi Adafa Mensa from the Houston Texans. Didn't do much in his first year with the Vikings, kind of like Rager, was kind of a, a whimper. Um, but his job, Blacklock, might have got a little bit more secure when James Lynch was lost for the season. But have you heard anything about Ross Blacklock this training camp preseason? Not really. Uh, I, I don't believe that Quasi will be afraid to say sayonara, sayonara to him via roster cut. Um, and not do like the sunken cost fallacy. Yeah, he didn't really cost that much to begin with. But I think Ross Blacklock is a guy who has fancy draft stock, second rounder, 2020 NFL draft. I don't know if he makes this team. Jonathan Bullard is probably the guy that they keep. I don't even have Bullard on the roster bubble. That's how secure I think he is as a depth guy after James Lynch's injury. And this is where we start to get a little sexy with the next two dudes. DJ Wanham, I put on the roster bubble. Because if the Vikings cut him one week from today, they're going to save a couple million bucks. This is his roster year. And there is a theory that suggests they like Daniel Hunter, Marcus Davenport, Patrick Jones, Andre Carter, and Luigi Villain. And that would that would make the five edge rushers that you need for a, a typical edge rushing room, at least in terms of quantity. I think there's going to be some odd man out on the edge rusher depth chart that will make you scratch your head. Luigi Villain looked wonderful in the first preseason game. I certainly hope he's not the odd man out. But Wanham, based on not drafted by this general manager, always just kind of plays decent. Um, just kind of a reserve ta- uh, defensive end outside linebacker. He's on the roster bubble to me, and I've I've put him on the outside looking in on numerous roster projections throughout the spring and summer. Now this one, his pal, his rookie UDFA pal, Andre Carter. Uh, when the Vikings signed Ivan Pace, you'll notice he's nowhere near this roster bubble thing. Uh, the, the two big splashy parts of that were Andre Carter from Army because, you know, he's built uh, – He's like Daniil Hunter's size. We talked about that a couple weeks ago. And Ivan Pace. And Ivan Pace, like I said, he's already he's trying to be a starter in week one. But Andre Carter really hasn't done much this summer. 
Uh, I thought he would make the roster when I started really thinking about this in June, but I'm not so sure he might end up on the practice squad because somebody out of Hunter, Davenport, Valane, Jones, Wanham, and Carter, one of those guys is probably not going to make the 53 men because otherwise you're finding yourself with all these exceptions. Well, maybe they'll keep six wide receivers. Maybe they'll keep four tight ends. God, they got so, so many promising cornerbacks, CBs. Maybe they'll keep six. Nope, that's not how it works. You got you to gotta shave guys from these spots. So if you're going to keep six wide receivers, that means you can only have four or five edge rushers. Uh, so Wanham and Carter are the bubble guys here in my estimation. There's always an outside chance that Patrick Jones is a somewhat shocking roster cut because he wasn't drafted by Quasi Dafamensa. But I think that Patrick Jones is safe, and I'm excited to see how he blossoms in year three. Three more. Uh, I call this one the Troys, the linebackers. Somebody between Troy Dye and Troy Reader is probably going to get cut because you have Jordan Hicks and Brian Osamoa as the starters. Ivan Pace, who's nibbling at starting himself as a Adam Thielen-like UDFA. And then they'll probably have room for one more linebacker, and that's either going to be Troy Dye or Troy Reader. I'm not sure which ones they'll keep. If I had to gamble, it would be Troy Dye. Um, but one of the Troys, or both of them are on the roster bubble, and one of them probably isn't going to make the regular season depth chart. And then the final one I had to throw on here because of the, the roster math is Najee Thompson. Now, if you if we would have chatted about him on this show back on June blah, 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 it would have been a joke. Like, that guy ain't making the roster. But he looks like a gift from heaven as a special teams commodity. He even said in April that there's not a better special teamer in the country. Bada bing, voila, he wasn't, you know, just making shit up. He's a damn good special teamer, and it would feel criminal after what he's done in the preseason to let him go play cornerback or special teams for another team. So I think solely for those special teams purposes, especially because Chris Boyd now plays for the Cardinals, who we'll see this week and weekend, I do. I do think Najee Thompson makes the active roster, and that means that the Vikings will keep Byron Murphy, Caleb Evans, Mikai Blackman, Andrew Booth, jo- uh, Jawan Williams, and then Najee Thompson. Now, it's up to you to figure out who is the byproduct casualty, roster casualty, because they keep Najee Thompson. But this is an example of a young man who's jumped up out of nowhere, done the thing on special teams, and deserves a roster spot. So that's what I got. Jaron Hall, Dwayne McBride, Kane Wangu, Jalen Rayler. Jalen Rager, Brandon Powell, Nikhil Harry, Tristan Jackson, Chris Reed, Oli Udo, Nick Muse, Ross Blacklock, DJ Wanham, Andre Carter, Troy Reader, Troy Dye, and Najee Thompson as bona fide roster bubble players. Again, there's going to be about, what, 25, 30 other players that flat out don't make it, but there's no mystery involved with them. And then there's the Justin Jeffersons and TJ Hawkinsons, Daniel Hunters that are obvious locks for the roster. Tomorrow, we'll be back with Josh Fry to get his 53-man projection, and we shall see what Thursday and Friday take us for the rest of the week. Skull, baby.